Hi, this is Sandeep Jali and Manos Brilakis presenting case 273 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of successful PCI of an LAD CTO, but there was more to it. Before going on to the case, I would like to announce the inaugural PCI Manuals Live course that will be held in Minneapolis, Minnesota on March 27 and 28, 2025. This is just before ACC, and the course will be a small group with a lot of discussions on the algorithmic approach to various challenges of PCI, hands-on sessions, lectures, and live cases. would love to see anyone who is interested in participating in Minneapolis. And moving on to the case, this was an older gentleman who presented with exertional dyspnea. He had a stress test that showed anterior ischemia, and he was sent for PCI of an LAD CTO that was diagnosed on a coronary CT angiogram that we'll show in a second. These are the diagnostic uh, angiography images. We have dual injection, injecting first from the donor vessel, the right coronary artery, and we can see some septal collaterals going all the way to the LAD. We see that the LAD has a well-defined proximal cap. It is a tapered cap, but there is significant calcification, short lesion length, and the distal vessel seems to be good quality. The same thing can be seen on the LAO cranial, where we see again the short occlusion length, there are some bridging collaterals, some septal collaterals. The distal vessel is good quality, but there is heavy calcification on the proximal cap. This is the coronary CT showing circumferential calcification. This is just proximal to the proximal cap. And then there is also significant calcification within the occlusion and distal to the occlusion. So based on this, based on the short occlusion length, the clear proximal cap and the good quality distal vessel, the decision was made to start with undergrade as per hybrid and global CTO algorithm. If that didn't work, use ADR, and if that didn't work, go retrograde through septals. Another thing to pay attention to, this is the dual, um, the dual blood pressure tracings. And uh, this will become very important as we discuss uh, how the case uh, folded out. And this is the same at a little faster speed. Again, the waveform is very important about what is about to come. So we tried undergrade wiring. We used the Fielder XTA guide wire, but that didn't uh, have much luck. Then we try a Gaia X2. The Gaia X2 seemed to go along the right direction, but uh, we did have a significant difficulty penetrating. Um, we did try uh, various locations. You can see here the wire is knuckling, but it is not clear we're able to penetrate. Again, this is an injection from the iliocranial. We see that the wire is probably a little too medial. It would be better to go a little more lateral. So based on the shot, we redirect the guide wire. Again, guy on X2. And then uh, after a few attempts, uh, the wire actually seems to be advancing along the course of the LAD. Of course, we need to confirm that. So we did um, uh, an injection both in the iliocranial shot, and we see the wire seems to be in the right position. And the same on the areocranial. Once again, now we actually have much better feeling from the right coronary artery, which is a nice example of how the collateral flow may reverse. I think after advancing a guide wire under greatly, we probably disrupted any bridging collaterals. So now we have much better feeling of the mid LAD through the septal collaterals from the right. We had a lot of difficulty advancing equipment. The microcatheter would not go. So we use a subfire and a Takeru balloon, and then we decided to do orbital atherectomy. This is orbital atherectomy of the mid LAD. And after doing that, we were able to successfully expand the balloon. We also did IVUS that showed a um, good preparation of the vessel. We then stented with uh, a long drag eluting stent, and this provides a nice final result. Patient did fine. We did not have any issues with atherectomy or stent placement, excellent imithry flow, an excellent result. But if you recall the pressure waveform, this was not right. The pressure waveform seemed to be a little sluggish. This is confirming that actually this is the uh, pulsus tardus, so meaning retarded upstroke. It is not the usual 
upstroke one should see with the systole, one should see the upstroke of the arterial waveform go up very quickly. But instead, what we have here is the classic pulsus parvus and tardus. And you can see here the phenomenon after a PVC where the LV pressure goes up, but so does the aortic pressure. So interestingly enough, the diagnosis of severe aortic stenosis was actually made in the cath lab in a patient who was sent for PCI of an LAD CTO. Of course, this is very fortunate, and it does match with his symptoms that were mainly exertional dyspnea. So the patient um, was referred uh, for TAVR. Several lessons from the case. There are lessons both from the coronary part, but also beyond the coronary part. Regarding the coronary, what we had here is a heavily calcified short CTO. We were able to cross with undergrade wiring, but then it was uh, balloon uncrossable. And we do know that those lesions tend also to be balloon undilatable. So what we did is use a small balloon, delivered a microcaster, delivered an atherectomy wire, Viper flex tip, did orbital atherectomy, and that facilitated good expansion of the balloons in the stents. We also had the flow reversal after we crossed the LED CTO. The flow that was mainly through ipsilateral collaterals uh, went down, and the flow started coming mainly through septal collaterals. But this was only part of the case, and arguably one can say that this was actually the least important part because the patient ended up having severe aortic stenosis. And it was looking at the waveform, the retarded upstroke of the arterial waveform, that actually helped us make the diagnosis. So at the end, we crossed into the LV and confirmed significant gradient between the, L, the left ventricle and the aorta. So sometimes we can get lost into the complexities of the coronary anatomy, the trees, and lose the forest, the entire patient. Retrospectively, the patient had exertional dyspnea, possibly in part because of the LADCTO, but the severe aortic stenosis likely contributed significantly as well. And the other lesson is that one should be very careful about looking at the hemodynamics and the arterial waveform. We are very used to looking at this very carefully because CTOPCI, there's often diffuse disease and there's significant dampening of the pressure waveforms. In our case, this was actually not dampening, but it was the pulsus tardus, the delayed upstroke pulse of severe aortic stenosis that led to the diagnosis. Thank you.